Good evening and welcome to Advent Vespers at Charter House. I'm Pastor Rachel Hansen and this is the second Sunday of Advent, the day in which we put the chrismons on the Christmas tree here in the chapel. Chrismon is a monogram of Christ, chrismon, and it's a handmade ornaments with using only white and gold that are symbols of Jesus' life. So tonight, we read the scripture and we put the chrismons on the tree to complete it and we tell the story of Jesus in scripture, chrismons, and song. The first reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And here is the angel, Chrismon. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here is the star. The third reading is from Luke chapter 1. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. 
He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. This is the manger, the manger of Chrismon. The fourth reading is from Matthew chapter 4, beginning with verse 18. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Here is the fish, Chrismon. The fifth reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only begotten son, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made God known. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father. This is the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The sixth reading is about the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. From Mark chapter 14, starting at verse 12. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he goes, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
He will show you a large room upstairs, finished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. <clears throat> While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and all of them drank from it. He said to him, them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. This is the chrismon of the Lord's Supper. The seventh reading <clears throat> is for the cross of Jesus. It is found in Luke 23, beginning at the 32nd verse. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals. The eighth reading is from Luke 24, verses 21 to 5. Luke 24, 1 to 5. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. This is the butterfly symbol of the resurrection. The ninth reading is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the crown. The tenth reading is from Revelation chapter 1. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And this is the Alpha and Omega, the Alpha and the Omega. The 11th reading is found in Matthew chapter 28. Verses 19 and 20. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the orb and cross, symbolizing the whole universe, the whole cosmos, belonging to God and saved and redeemed through Jesus' cross.
Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we are part of a big story, the story of the prophecies of your birth, your birth, your redeeming life, your cross, your teachings, and your resurrection. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for your story and that we are a part of it. You have also given us your mission to give your name and your story to the rest of the world. We thank you that we are a part of this mission and we ask you to bless us with your peace at this time. Thank you, God, for the story of Christmas and the way in which you walk with us through our lives. We praise you, we thank you, and we give you our earnest commitment to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you to come to the chapel and see the wonderful chapel tree lighted up and covered with the beautiful white and gold chrismons. And you're invited to join in person Vespers Sunday afternoons at 4 p.m. I now invite you to receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>